A very good morning to you. It is Tuesday the 18th of May, so I hope you're doing well. Uh, don't forget, if you're watching this on YouTube, to like and subscribe to the channel, and you can also check out AmplifyLive.com, where we do have absolutely free access to our Trader Hub portal, uh, so do check that out. But otherwise, let's get straight into it and talk about what's going on this morning. And a little bit of recovery from generally a lower close that we had on Wall Street last night. Uh, the Dow closed down about two tenths, similar close to the S&P, the Nasdaq slightly laggard down about 0.6%. Uh, overall, though, things generally a little bit more positive in Asia overnight and index futures trade higher this morning going into the European swing. And let's just talk over a couple of charts first before we then start to incorporate some of the news and as well as looking at the, the day ahead. And going to start with precious metals, in fact, and let's have a look at spot gold or gold futures, in fact, that I'm looking at here. And gold has risen to its highest level in more than three months. Uh, concerns over the pace of the global recovery creeping back a touch following a flare-up in coronavirus cases in parts of Asia specifically. So you've got kind of COVID concerns at play. Uh, secondly, expectations of further increases in consumer prices could start to bolster demand as an inflation hedge uh, as number point number two. And then point number three, you've got a, a weakening dollar. And we continue to see that pre present um, last week with non um, commercial traders adding to their net short dollar positioning, the dollar index as well, uh, continuing its decline yesterday and this morning. It is seen down in the Dixie once again, trading down one tenth of one percent around 90 um, at the 90 handle, which is quite key as well um, to keep an eye on. So, yesterday in gold, we saw a nice uh, breakout. This was actually Sunday night's trade. Two, two kind of classic opportunities to get along this market. Uh, one coming in the overnight Asia pack session, as I said, Sunday going into Monday. But then we had another move down to it uh, at that same range high kind of zone that had been in play over the course of the last week and a half or so. Then we saw a really nice push up during North American trading hours and then Asia's just kept us up at this level. And this was our target. Remember, we were talking about this yesterday. Uh, 1875 and, and we got there or within literally half a dollar of so uh, and on the daily chart you know this is unaltered from what we were looking at yesterday which was that significant breakout of the levels around 45 which was a, as well around the high that was capping price action in early Feb and if we were to get ahead of steam and break technically through that point then we didn't really anticipate a lot of technical resistance until we got up to 75 uh, and here we are so yeah ni nicely played out there uh, in the gold market. Similarly, precious metals just generally uh, following suit. We were kind of stalking silver prices yesterday. They were very close proximity, kind of tapping on um, what was that level at 28 yesterday. Uh, and then when gold started to just progressively push on, we saw a nice opportunity to get long as well on silver. Broke through uh, the previous high that we had on the 10th of May and then the obvious target uh, to take some about uh, a half a dollar higher up at around those previous highs that we're seeing on the 23rd of Feb. And we sit just above those levels here now at the moment uh, as we start to get slightly more up and around the overbought territory on the RSI. Uh, again, on the point of the 28 break, it was looking quite comfortable in these indicators that we could have some uh, further headroom and we just needed that sympathy play with gold having made those extensions for those other metals to, to follow suit. Um, so yeah, nice, nice moves in the commodity space, otherwise in the equity space, uh, fairly quiet overall. I mean, Monday's calendar was pretty quiet. Today's calendar is pretty quiet and it is, in terms of US data, a fairly quiet week. Uh, but the NASDAQ 100, still keeping an eye on this, this re rectangle here, which was going back to the highs we had back on the this is looking at the 2nd of May, uh, that double bottom on the 4th and 6th. And then, although a little bit rough and choppy around the end of last week, it has held. And we're right back up there testing at the moment after initial declines that were seen in the futures market really this time yesterday. That would be quite key. Again, any break above that, things could get more progressively bullish on a bit of a further reversal from the sell-off that we had last week. Uh, unlike some of the other indices, the Nasdaq still got a little bit of way to go before we start taking back uh, some of the selling pressure that was seen at the start of last week on, on Monday session in particular. Um, as far as the S&P is concerned, just have a quick look here. So 
So S and P at the moment, uh, not not a great deal of interest here for me right now. Uh, at the bottom end of this recent range, fleshed out yesterday evening um, at around forty one thirty eight. I think that's a good area now of support. You've got the daily S one on the pivots. You've got yesterday's low and that respective high as well we had on before the breakout on the 14th of last week. So I like that area now for any support on any pullback of prices to just uh, eke out this kind of range that we might trade in at the moment. On the upside as well, you've got the R1 sitting just above um, the 16th high. This was coming into, well, really the recommencement of electronic trade when we reopened uh, before we saw a bit of a decline on Monday night, but that'll be probably the range I'll be looking at at the moment, and then looking at more interest if equities continue that recovery on a break, pullback, and then extension of that recovery from the sell off from the beginning of last week, or if we come back down to the lower bound to play off that support area, uh, would probably be um, what I'd be looking at for, for the time being. On the equity side of things, I do want to quickly throw in Tesla's chart into the mix. Uh, and I have marked this up. So I'm going to have to move a couple of things just so I can fit it in my screen that I'm sharing with you at the moment. So there we go. And we're looking at Tesla shares. Now obviously Tesla have come under some pretty extreme pressure, really. When, and it's been pretty persistent. I mean, if we go from where we were literally um, year-to-date highs we're already seen on the 25th of January it really wasn't that long that long ago but if we go back up to when we were trading in Tesla which was basically 900 to the lows we printed yesterday we're off around nearly 40 percent in Tesla shares now as you can see after Kathy Wood came out and she was selling some of her holdings in Teslas at the moment you remember she was kind of freeing up some cash it seemed to get into Coinbase of which she's feeling a bit of pain at the moment but filings would show she continues to be quite an active buyer and dips in coin um, but here in Tesla it's just gone from bad to worse almost and the reason why I'm talking about this is because there's another little string to that bow that's come out uh, or been unveiled if you like from a short position that's been built up by a very infamous character in markets but here you've got Elon on SNL You've got China production issues that the, the car manufacturers faced, just given some of the ongoing tensions as well between on the state level, US and China. You've then got the U, U-turn on Bitcoin payments, uh, and obviously cryptos had some high volatility, particularly downside in Bitcoin uh, over the last couple of days as well. Stabilized a little bit at the moment. 542 obviously is a really big level of support on the downside, as you can see marked up here for the 2nd of December uh, and on the 5th of March. Any breakdown of that, I would say we run down to 500 ASAP um, if that were to be taken out. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because we had a lot of filings um, from hedge funds last night <coughs> and Michael Berry, who you probably realize from the big short, obviously very famous individual from shorting in the financial crisis uh, subprime. And he basically has come out and it, has revealed that his fund has reported put options on 800,100 Tesla shares. Um, now, that position size is worth roughly around $534 million. So it's going to be interesting to see. I'm sure e Elon is going to bite. He almost always does. So I'll be expecting a tweet probably from him today to try and defend himself. Um, but yeah, another kind of meaningful development here that I can kind of annotate on this Tesla chart. And I'll be interested to see, although timings specifically, it's quite difficult to get a real nail down of when uh, Berry was starting to build up this position. But um, it definitely has been accumulating over the period of the first quarter. So it'll be interested to see um, how Tesla shares open when we get underway a bit later on. I'll keep you updated in the community about its pre-market uh, movement. Uh, otherwise, the other chart I wanted to quickly mention was was WTI crude. And you know, despite some of the things that I mentioned that uh, are lifting gold, which is a slight apprehension on the COVID situation coming out of Asia, overall the Western world, touch wood, thankfully at this point, is moving along 
on on cue, if you like, in terms of the US and also in the, the UK, at least in the latter for now. Obviously, we continue to monitor and vigilance the Indian COVID variant situation. But with WTI crude, we've always remained quite bullish here um, at Amplify about the idea that reopening further airline travel that's only going to pick up and increase whether or not it gets disrupted by this Indian variant now globally or not the point is in the future there will be a return a normalization if you like in terms of the physical demand for for crude oil and so just having a look at oil here at the moment I'm going to flip it over to a daily chart (coughs) and this is what I'm looking at so this is going back to give you a bit of idea on the, the axis on the bottom. Sorry, let me just change over here. Um, this is what I'm looking at at WCI Crude. 2018 is here when we had the peak up at around 75 bucks. You've then got 2019 here, which is when April 2019, we hit a high around 66, 76. Close proximity to that as well, beginning of uh, 2020, before then the pandemic hit. We've had a rejection at technically around these levels at the beginning of March, and here we are again. And you know, if you look on a 90 minute, we are just literally tapping on that door, looking for a break here. So something I'm definitely watching today and this week, and if we can get above that, uh, and it's been quite bullish in the return here that we've had over the last day's price action to take us back up to this level, then again, you know, if we break higher here, yes, we've got a bit of an extension on that move on the 8th on the failed um, break. But then there's not a great deal of resistance here technically then if you start looking back on these charts. And the obvious target here has got to be, you would think, the $70 handle um, psychologically. And that puts us back up the highest levels that we would have traded since basically October of 2018 at that point. So it's still looking quite quite bullish there um, at the at the moment. A few other things then from the headlines that I just wanted to cover, uh, having just looked at the charts there and going to just talk about the Fed briefly. We've got the FMC minutes obviously tomorrow. To be quite frank, I'm not really expecting a great deal from them. Um, further reiteration from one of the senior Fed officials, Karida, last night said that during a webinar that we could have expected April payroll report shows we have not made substantial further progress on the central bank's goals for employment and, in, and inflation laid out as their thresholds to begin scaling back their bond purchase program. So to reader, the Fed continue to just remain firm for the time being on that front. We did have overnight, just so you're aware, the RBA minutes, um, not really too much in the way of a reaction, I would say, if anything, just pervading dollar weakness, helping some of these currency pairs uh, remain fairly buoyant and actually I'll come back to it Euro's just had a breakout here on the upside um, but uh, the RBA said it will pay close attention to economic data and conditions in financial markets when deciding whether to roll over its yield target maturity and or to undertake further quantitative easing the RBA is due to make a call at its July 6th meeting or whether it will move that three-year yield target to November 24th bond uh, from the current April 20. 20- 24 security but that's understandable just given the timings and the rollover i don't think would be that surprising but yeah i just mentioned the euro um, so a bit of a further extension of that dollar weakness uh, which we we're talking about yesterday still very prevalent at the moment and yeah the euro is just testing here uh, a fairly interesting level which is as you can see a bit of a, a breakout from that prior week and that previous uh, Friday's price activity, which is around the 121.85 uh, level. Uh, just looking here on the on a daily, yeah, we start to come up to the 122 handle. It starts to get a little bit more interesting from a resistance point of view, whether or not we can continue this upward trend that we've seen really take hold since the end of March, April, being really good for the uh, for the euro. Obviously, byproduct of dollar softness, but with the vaccination programs where Europe was lagging through that period of the beginning of the year, January, February, now having to start to see things picking up a little bit more pace, albeit I saw this morning J&J very slow to fulfill their Q2 deliveries to the Eurozone for their coronavirus drug at the moment. But look, looked quite dollar centric at the moment because cable's also continuing the upward trend. And this is what we were talking about yesterday. 
there's a lot of UK data coming out this week, jobs, inflation, all these types of metrics, growth, PMIs, they all should lend their hand to a more positive backdrop, despite UK ministers reportedly discussing contingency arrangements for local lockdowns or delaying the reopening on June 21st. I think the government has been quite clear about the data over dates and any then loose uh, any delaying of Ju- June 21st. I don't think it's particularly that big a deal for Sterling as a headwind if it moves by a couple of weeks and also if they adopt a more localised rather than national programme. But with restaurants, hospitality, things like that opening in this latest lockdown, I don't think it really detracts from that economic rebound, uh, so to speak. Not unless, obviously, the Indian variant situation in cases get materially worse from here on out. Um, ITV's Peston did report that the prospects of a final easing of lockdown restrictions in England going ahead precisely as planned on June 21st are close to nil, according to ministers and officials. So uh, you can pretty much take it now that it's probably unlikely to happen in that current complete restrictions being dropped full. Having a look at cable here then, again, technically, Quite, quite an important breach now of where we were from the high on the 11th. And, and technically, as we've said before, we've got the 142 handle sat just above here, about 12 pips away from current price. But really, resistance-wise, not a great deal until we get the year-to-date high seen on the 24th of Feb now at 142.45. Uh, we have had the jobs data out of the UK this morning. Not really a, a focal point, to be quite honest with you. Not with furlough still in play. The um, ILO unemployment rate Uh, 4.8% versus expected 4.9%. But the thing is about those jobs data is the government's strategy of adopting furlough until September is allowing then uh, kind of companies to keep people employed through then allowing the economy to reopen through May, June, July, August. By that point, economic activity should have really picked up a lot of pace. And that means that perhaps then Um, A lot of these employees might have survived the worst of the pandemic crisis, potentiality of being laid off. And at that point, you know, there's enough demand there to warrant them keeping their position and the unemployment spike never actually materialises, just given the uh, rollover and length of that government job support scheme. All right, quick look at the calendar then for today. And we do have at 10 o'clock the Eurozone Q1 GDP flash estimate, and you've got the employment figures as well, so just keep an eye on if you're trading European uh, products. And then this afternoon, pretty quiet overall, building permits, housing starts coming out in the US at 1.30. And from a speaker's perspective, ECB President Lagarde does speak later this afternoon at 3 p.m., but she's speaking at a student award ceremony. No text is expected there, and given the theme of the conference, not expecting any market moving uh, commentary. Bank of England's Governor Bailey and a number of the uh, BOE officials do speak in front of the Lord's Economic Affairs Committee on everything from the future of QE, the bank's transparency, its mandate, and so on. Perhaps interesting to keep half an ear on, but I don't think it's really going to be uh, a material mover for Sterling in terms of any new commentary on the economic situation or future monetary policy. Then, from a Fed voters' point of view, you've got Bostick speaking at 330 about resilience of the economy and financial system. Probably one thing to keep an eye, an eye on as well, pre-market is not only Tesla, as I mentioned, but also um, the kind of brick and mortar retailers. You've got um, Walmart and Home Depot gonna report pre-market, two of the bigger um, kind of names in that space. And obviously coming on the back of whether or not there's enough firepower left with those last stimulus checks that we saw going through January and March to see how these guys actually performed, but amid also those COVID restrictions uh, in America. Um, so that is it. i let you guys get on. Uh, so set up for still, although calendar-wise fairly quiet, still looks like a pretty interesting day could unfold. So good luck and uh, I'll see you in the Amplify Live chat room. Thanks very much.